Hey everyone, I am doing a video today on how to make a lucky star. This was in response to a video that I made the other day where I had shown some beads in a jar and there were a couple paper stars in there and um, I got asked if I've ever, did I make those and I said yes and I, had I ever shown anyone how to make them and no, not really. <laughs> I made those like six years ago, so I wasn't into YouTube or showing anybody anything. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 10-inch piece of scrapbook paper. You can use a 12-inch piece, which is preferable, but this is what I have on the table, so I'm going to use this today. So I take a piece of scrapbook paper, and I have to say that you can make them as wide as you want them, but the best ones are anywhere from a half inch to three quarters of three quarters of an inch wide. They make the best size lucky stars. So I'm going to take the paper, cut it. Let me cut two just in case I mess one up. I have a backup. I've learned after making this video four times that um, not everything goes as predicted. So I've cut my paper into my little strips. Get rid of this. And then I'm going to take the strip of paper and we're going to fold this. Now this is, the longer the strip is and the better quality thickness of paper you have, not cardstock, um, the nicer your star is and the easier it will be to mash the in-betweens. In yeah, I'll show you what I'm talking about. And they come out nicer. The star comes out nicer. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and I'm going to... Everybody does it different, but I take mine and turn it like this. Some people take it and turn it like this. You know, that might be easier, like a ribbon. So you're just taking one end on, crossing it over to the other side. And don't make this part too, too long. Okay, so take your paper, cross it over, and take this little... Oh, I say little. <laughs> Take the tail and put it, fold it up un underneath the rest of it and put it through the hole and then give it a little pull. Don't jerk on it or you're going to rip your paper. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Alright, so you want to pull on it a little bit so that it's nice and snug, but you don't want to pull on it too, too hard, or you really will rip the paper, and then you'll have to start all over. And then just give it a little mash down. You don't have to use a bone folder. It's not that kind of situation. All right, so you have this little tail right here. And if it's short enough, all you have to do is just tuck it in underneath here. But mine's a little long, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it up on the end to make it shorter, and then I'm going to take it and tuck it in there. But when I tuck it in here, I have to make sure that I fold it so it goes along this same line right here. So I'm going to tuck it in. Well, actually, go ahead and crease it first and then tuck it in. That'll make it easier. I think that's the way I've seen them do it in the videos. I forgot about it. All right, so there's my crease. Now I'm going to just slide it underneath the other piece of paper. And it's just a, a placeholder, basically. Keep it out of the way. So the concept of this is to go to make your paper fold to the left and then the right, and then the left, and then the right, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So we're going to flip this over to the other side. This was the back side. Now it's going to be the top side. So you take th this long strip here, and you fold it up so that it's flush with what you see here. So you're going to give it a little pinch, just, just a soft pinch. And when you do that, you want to make sure that it lines up also with the edge of the paper. So here's the fold. And then you want it to line up with this piece of paper right here. So fold it over and make sure it lines up with this piece of paper here on this edge here. Then what you're going to do is you're going to make a little crease again and you're going to fold it over. Only this time you're going to lean to the right and make sure it's flush with the edge. You're going to fold it over again and you're going to make sure it's flush with the left side. And you just keep doing this, folding it over. It'll be a right side, then a left side, then a right side. And all you're doing is going back and forth, creating lots of layers and stability for the star. That's all you're doing is just rolling it over and over 
left, right, left, right, left. And then when you get to the last one, guess what? You can't go any further because you've run out of tab. So what you'll do is just like you did before, you're going to take... Now this one's short enough. I can slip it in there without any problems. You just take it, slip it underneath there. Give it a little press down. Not like, don't go really hard with it. Just a little press down. So you're going to want to puff the star up. That's what makes it so cool now is you're going to mash on it. It's going to puff up a little bit. But when you mash on it, you're going to put pressure with your thumb and your finger, thumb and finger. And yes, there's five sides and only four fingers or two thumbs and two fingers are involved, but believe me, it'll work. So you're going to take this and you're going to push a little pressure on the sides and eventually something will cave in and then rotate it and hit that last spot. And there you have it. There's your star. Very simple. Now, there is another way to do this if you're not comfortable doing it this way or it hurts your hands. Um, I had someone show me that when it's flat, what you can do instead of mashing it, you know how I had you mash with your fingers this way? You can take it and just give it a mash on one side and get it started. And then take a pencil and roll it in between the two spikes of the stars and then rotate it and roll with the pencil, rotate it, roll with the pencil. And that will also create the nice little divots that you need for the star. Now, it's not going to be perfect every single time until you've done quite a few of them to where you kind of get the feel of the paper and the pressure of it. It does take a little while to make them absolutely perfect, but that they don't need to be perfect. It's just something cute. So there's the star. All right, let's try it again. I don't know, is it easier to see it in white or gray? Probably white. All right, so let's flip my, my gray strip over and let's do it white. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and make that crossover here Take our little tail here, go up through the, the circle. You see my finger? You're going up through there. There's the paper. And then give it a little tug and kind of wiggle it around so that you pull on this end and then you pull on this end and then you pull some more to where it's nice and snug and they're laying nice and flat against each other. You don't want any crinkles. Don't pull too hard or you'll rip your paper. And you kind of want these ends right here to meet nicely. And then give it a little press. Take this. And again, you've got to make your fold so it's even with this other piece behind it. So that it matches all the other edges. All right, this one's short enough. I don't need to fold anything. I'm going to give it a nice tuck inside. A little mash to make sure it's nice and folded. Then we're going to take this and we're going to flip it over to the opposite side, fold, give it a little mash, and make sure it lines up with the left side. You're going to start with the left, remember? So what you're doing when you roll it, you'll either roll it on this side or this side of the star every single time. So this time, the first way you do it, you roll it to the left. Then you roll your paper over, line it up with the right side, give it a little squish with your fingers, roll, make sure it's lined up with the left hand side, give it a little press, roll it again, do the right, press, left, press, and just keep going until you run out of strip. And like I said in the very beginning, a 12-inch strip of paper is much better for the stability of the star. It makes it a lot easier to mash it. Gives it a little resistance, yet makes it stable. All right, so here we go. I don't have enough over here to even go to the other side. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop. And I'm going to fold this under. See what I did? I just folded the end. And then I'm going to fold it again and tuck it under the last piece. And there's my little snow, my little star. And now what we're going to do, you know, this, this. 
and we're going to apply pressure equally and you'll get one side that'll give you fits and the other side will go nicely. All right, so pretend I can't get it to mash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil and roll it in between the two points of the star on one side and usually it will work. This one's kind of wonky. Well, this one's not going to go as well. That's what I get for doing it a second time, right? <laughs> All right, this star is a little wonky. When I puffed it up, it didn't do quite as well as I had hoped. But we're going to keep at it until we get something that resembles a star. It's a little wonky from the folded paper in the back. But you got something close to a regular star. There you go. All right, so I'm going to show you what to do with your stars. I mean, they're really cute, and it's, it's nice to have a bunch in a jar to make a jar look pretty with all kinds of colored paper and stuff. But... I'm the kind of person that, while that's pretty, I want what I make to have some kind of a purpose or an end result that I really like. So hang on while I get my stuff, and I will show you what to do with your stars. Okay, so what we have here is a piece of string. Actually, it's quilting thread folded in half. I'm going to fold it in half, take the end where the loop is, put a clip over it because you don't want... Well, you don't want anything to fall off the end. I'm going to take this and I'm going to thread a needle. Use a nice sewing needle that um, is sharp, not a cross stitch needle that is blunted on the end. You want this to be nice and sharp because it's going to go through layers of paper. All right, you thread it. Now you're going to take your stars. Now. This is how I do mine. Other people might do theirs differently. I don't know, but this is just the way I learned how to do it. Take your needle and go in one of the divots, you know, the place where you indentated. Take it and do it smack dab in the middle. Poke, poke it through the paper. Hold the star up and go straight up through the tip on the opposite side of the divot where you stuck the needle in. And then pull. I think my thread's not threaded prop. My stuff has come. There we go. All right. So let's do it again. In the divot, go in the middle, stick the needle in, flip your star up, and makes it easier to go up instead of jabbing yourself. Go up through the end of the point that's opposite of the divot where you put it in. And then pull. And you just keep doing this over and over and over until you get the amount of stars that you want to have on your string. Let's see here. Where's the hole on this one? There it is. And then hold it upwards and go through the end of the point. And you just keep going until you get the desired length that you really want to have. All right, so I'm going to show you what you can do with this to make this an even better project. Okay, I think I've got everything I need. All right, so this is flax. I think it's, yeah, flax. And it, you know, flax comes in, I think, almost like DMC floss, where there's more than one strand to make, uh, to make it thick. So I took all the other strands off and I've got two strands on this probably one would have been good enough but I went ahead and did two so I'm going to show you how to make a garland using the stars that I made for Christmas so I'm going to go in the divot like I said before hold it up go through the tip of the star now what I have here are I think these are supposed to be like little Christmas decorations they're little cellophane packages that have a gold loop of some kind on them so you can hang them on a tree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that 
loop off of there. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to shove it right through the package. I want to make sure, do it, yeah, shove it through the package. You got to be careful because your package will come unwrapped. Then I'm going to string it on here. See, it's going to come undone. You have to be careful when you do this. I'm going to take another star. Go in the divot and straight up through the end of the star. Then I found these kind of little kitschy decorations and it has, you know, it came with these little gold threads for you to put it on your tree and tie stuff on it. I don't know if it's meant to put on a tree or package or what it was, but I'm not using those. The, it has a hole in it right there. It has a little loop. So I'm going to take it and put the needle through it. And when you do this, you better make sure that your needle can go through. And then I'm going to take it and put it here like this. So what you have is a garland with your lucky stars. You have a star, a package, a star, a ball. Take another star and go through the divot just like I did before. Hold it upright so you don't stab yourself because I've done that plenty of times, not paying attention to what I'm doing. Up through the tip of the star. You see it? Pull. And you just keep going until you get what it is you're looking for. Some kind of a, a cutesy thing. All right, another kind of thing that I found. These are, I think, are usually in the pre-packaged Christmas decoration section. This is some kind of a, it's hard, but it's plastic, and there's a hole in each side. So I bought these, and you stick it through there, and then you thread it on. And there you have a star, a package, a star, a ball, a star, a little round, I don't know, it almost looks like a little hard candy. And that's how you can make little Christmas garlands um, for Christmas. I... Uh, there's so so much fun to do. Your imagination will go wild about all the things you can string on here. It's just crazy in the amount of stuff you can do on this. Um, I don't tie any knots in between anything because I put them on here and tight enough that they're not slipping and sliding around. And then, of course, you need to figure out how to secure your end here. Whoops. And there we go. <laughs> you need to figure out how to secure the end here so your stuff doesn't come off. You can tie yourself some kind of a loop on the end. And that way, when you hang it up, you have something to hang your loop on. If you use like a cup hook or some kind of a hook, then you can put your loop over it. But be sure that you put the clip on the end or you will be really flustered because as you're stringing all this stuff and you're pushing and tugging, it's just going right off the end. <laughs> and then you end up with a lot of cute things on the floor. So there you go. There's how to make a little Christmas garland. Now this will work for baby decorations also. If you look in a uh, party store, places like that, you can get little tiny kitschy looking baby decorations. Not all of them will have a loop on them, but you do the best you can to find out what will work. Um, and then you'll put like a pink star, a little decoration, a blue star, a little decoration, and alternate it like that. I've made these garlands for a few years and put draped them on Christmas trees, given them as gifts so people can do them the next year on their own trees. They're so much fun. Anyway, so that's what I do with my lucky stars. And I hope that you enjoyed it and you got some good ideas out of it so that you can make some lucky stars too. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.